Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A wild chase across Metro Detroit ends with two suspects in police custody, all of it caught on police dash cam video. And that tops Local 4 News at 11. Glad you're with us tonight. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Hill. The chase began in Wyandotte when officers tried to stop the suspects. Pamela Osborne picks up the story from there. That chase stretched about 15 miles indeed here in Detroit, right near the Hollywood Casino. Passing third. The driver of this speeding car caught the attention of Wyandotte police earlier this month. Seconds after approaching the car, the driver and his passenger take off with officers Kyle Cox and Alice Dacatis following behind. What officers didn't know at the time was the driver was a wanted fugitive with six warrants out for his arrest and the car he was driving, Wyandotte police say it was stolen. Perfect. He's been taken back off through O'Connor at the green light. The chase stretched across three cities before stopping near Greek. We're going to be northbound on, I think, a 75 service drive. Police say once they got a look inside of the car they were chasing, they found crack cocaine. Wyandotte police commending those officers, noting that the driver and the passenger who had skipped parole had a history of victimizing the community. By getting those drugs off of the street, they undoubtedly were able to keep more people safe. Reporting in Detroit, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Hey, Pamela, thank you. Well, we're also getting a look at new body cam video of a state police canine helping troopers find a missing teenager. Investigators say the 15-year-old from Messick had been missing since Thursday morning when she left for school. Well, this morning, a deputy spotted the team going into the woods. Uh, a, a canine team was called to the area. The trooper and the canine, named Ox, by the way, tracked the girl for about four miles. And once they found her, they brought her back to the patrol vehicle safely. No charge is going to be issued against several people arrested at Wayne State University this past May at a protest in support of Palestine. Five people were arrested May 30th and then later released. Wayne State Police sent warrant requests to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, but today Prosecutor Kim Worthy says a review of footage, including from the officer's body-worn cameras, shows no charges are warranted. In one incident, three women were arrested for trespassing. A police officer grabbed a woman with a bullhorn and two other women tried to help her. Prosecutor Worthy says there won't be any trespassing charges because the area wasn't clearly marked. In a second incident, a woman was arrested for assault after police said she hit an officer's shield and a man who tried to help her was arrested for resisting and obstructing. Well, the body cam uh, video shows the woman didn't touch the shield and all the man did apparently was stiffen his arms, at least according to those who re reviewed the video. Several other protesters who were ticketed have had their tickets dismissed. A Democratic Metro Detroit mayor says he's throwing his support behind former President Donald Trump. Hamtramck Mayor Amir Ghalib formally announcing his endorsement on social media. The endorsement comes after a private meeting between the two. That happened in Flint last week. Sean Lay talked with the mayor about what led to the decision. Be part of your endorsement based on principles you point to. Former President Trump, can you be specific and name some of the principles? Well, uh, first I uh, had the opportunity to meet with President Trump and he was, uh, um, he gave me his full attention to listen to my concerns and uh, he promised that he will address them. And then I think President Trump is very transparent. He always says what he believed in. You like that? Uh, I, I, yes. My interview with Hamtramck Mayor Amir Ghalib. He has shaken things up by endorsing former President Donald Trump, despite having disagreements with him. Can I you can give us one thing you disagree on? We don't have high expectations. I don't want to give false promises to the people that he will do what we want to, to happen, but we have a hope that the main thing is uh, to stop the war in the Middle East. And in Hamtramck, the mayor is getting positive feedback. The city of 28,000 people, 39% residents are from Middle Eastern descent, the majority from Yemen and Bangladesh. If the mayor's endorsement moves the needle on people here moving towards Trump, uh, Wayne County Democrats say have, that is a real concern, especially if local Arab Americans are still with the uncommitted movement. She says voting uncommitted is a vote for Trump. When you vote uncommitted, we think you vote for, for 
Springfield years of Ohio. chaos and division. Wayne County Commissioner Monique McCormick will urge local Arab Americans tomorrow who are still planning to vote uncommitted, unhappy with the Biden administration's policy towards the war in Gaza, to get behind Kamala Harris. She says the mayor's endorsement was a complete surprise. And what was your first reaction? I'm, I'm boggled by it, and I'm not really sure how uh, the Arab community and others that think remaining uncommitted will uh, solve anything. The main thing is uh, to stop the war in the Middle East. That's, that's a big accomplishment that the, the current administration failed to, uh, uh, to do. Sean Lay, Local 4. All right, Sean. Local 4 is tackling the big issues this election in a town hall series that kicks off tomorrow. We're teaming up with Oakland University's Center for Civic Engagement for our first event tomorrow afternoon at 1230. Our panel is diving into the impact misinformation and social media can have on our trust in politics. You can join us in person at the Oakland Center on U OU's campus, or you can watch us streaming live on Local 4 Plus or click on Detroit.com. Well, it's a team of fearless men and women who devote their lives to protecting the people of Detroit. As photojournalist uh, Marty Herrick shows us, the Detroit Fire Department welcomed four new members to its family. Well, today we're pinning the badge on an employee who has been hit past his probation, and we're excited to have him on the team. Kind of gives them a sense of, of belonging. They're no longer under the supervision that now they're a permanent part of the department, and uh, we're just excited to have have them on board. Over the course of the year, uh, all the hard work and dedication that we have done, today means a lot. We get badged, we become fully full firefighters. The whole year of all the you know, sacrifices we did, you know, with family from studying to training, uh, today it, it, all, it all comes full circle. For me, being a firefighter is about community, it's about family, it's about having a sense of um, belonging. For me, it's like a religious thing. I feel like this is my calling is something God wanted me to do. I was born in the city, live in the city, so it's kind of feel good to be able to help people in the city I grew up in. The significance is you're at the finish line. I feel surreal. I feel great. I feel uh, almost like, a, you know, a sentimental to be here with my brothers after all, we, you know, all the work we put in. Like we all do, when if we're in a race, once you get to the finish line, that's when all of the gratification, excitement, exuberance, that's when that all comes out. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, the playoff push continues for the Tigers and those planning on going to Comerica Park for tomorrow's game. Got to adjust your schedule for the game's new start time announced a short while ago. So due to uncertainty surrounding the weather forecast, the game time between the Detroit Tigers and the Tampa Bay Rays has been moved up to 1.10 p.m. Tickets for the originally scheduled 6.40 p.m. game are valid for the new start time, or fans can exchange their tickets at any time for any future 2024 regular season game. And as we bring in Kim Adams, that sounds like maybe a pretty good decision, right? We had some, could be some bumpy weather coming tomorrow night. It could be. And if they're going to get the game in tomorrow, this would be the most likely time. Yep. It doesn't mean they're going to get it all in, however, mm -hmm. though, because we still have that chance for rain. But this is really the only window that would possibly even work would be during that one to four time frame. In the morning, we have a chance of showers and then we'll have cloudy skies at one o'clock. But it doesn't mean we won't still have a few lingering showers. But it's in the evening when a warm front possibly lifts as far north as I-94, and that might bring us not only showers, but also the possibility of thunderstorms, which is why, again, they moved the game up. But there could be spotty showers. Be prepared for that if you are headed to Comerica Park tomorrow. Right now downtown, though, look how pretty the skyline is because you can't see the clouds at night. 65 in Detroit, low 60s in Ann Arbor, 61 in Pontiac, and low 60s in Monroe. Rain chances over the next several days. Well, that's it. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get some good soaking rain because we certainly need it. After that, it is dry, which is good news for all of the sports going on here this week. So we just have to get through tomorrow, and then it's pretty much smooth sailing from there. Not so much down in Florida, however. We have a tropical cyclone that is now going to develop into what could be a major hurricane, and its name would be Helene, and she's going to come in pretty strong and fast. In fact, reaching Florida as early as Thursday. So we'll talk about that in just a few minutes.